Third vaccine approved in this country now, the AstraZeneca vaccine. Health Canada approved it for use Friday, but late this afternoon, a big caveat added. The National Advisory Committee on Immunization, or NACI as it's known, says it doesn't recommend the vaccine be used for Canadians 65 and older due to, quote, the insufficiency of evidence of efficacy in this age group at this time. What does that mean, though, for who gets this vaccine and when? Mona Niemer is Chief Science Advisor of Canada. Hi, Professor Niemer. Good to see you as always. Thank you for making the time. Thank you. Great to see you too. I wanted to start off by asking about this news that, that just was delivered to our inbox. Uh, the National uh, Immunization Task Force or, or Advisory Committee, rather, is recommending against using AstraZeneca in the population 65 and older, even though it was approved last week by Health Canada. Uh, your reaction to that recommendation? Well, you know, uh, of course, uh, NACI has some of uh, our top experts in, in vaccination and they're uh, usually extremely cautious. So the reason probably they're not recommending it is because there wasn't sufficient uh, data uh, uh, on uh, people vac that are over 65 vaccinated during the clinical trials. However, I'd like to say that since then, of course, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine has been used very widely in, uh, in Europe and particularly in the UK and uh, thousands and thousands of folks over 65 have been successfully immunized. So, but I'm just explaining the reason right. perhaps why NACI chose not to recommend it for over 65. And, and, yeah, and you're, and you're totally right. That's what they said in their reasoning that the, the data was, was limited. We had a scientist from AstraZeneca on, I think it was last month, who said that they were providing more data. Do you think that recommendation will change? Like, do you think they might be too cautious at this point? I think it might change because AstraZeneca is carrying out a large uh, phase three clinical trial in the US and the data uh, should be coming uh, momentarily in the, in the coming probably uh, weeks, uh, one or two weeks. So, uh, so perhaps, you know, there will be more people uh, over 65 in that study. And I know that NASI, uh, you know, is dynamically looking at the data as it comes from different places in the world, and uh, they may well change their uh, their recommendation then. And just for, for everyone watching right now, if, if NASI, which is the, the acronym for this advisory uh, committee, if, if they make this recommendation, is it binding on provinces? Like, do provinces have to do what they say and only limit it to a certain age age group or are they free to, to use the data as the, at their own will? Yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, NACI is an advisory group to the to the federal government and each province or most provinces have their own um, equivalent, if you want, to NACI, uh, who then take the recommendations and either uh, refine it further or, or, you know, work with it uh, to delineate different groups. So it's very possible that different provinces, depending on the outbreaks, depending on the situation of the pandemic, may decide to do different things. Uh, it, it's usually advisable for everyone across the country uh, to have uh, harmonized uh, policies and uh, recommendations, but the provinces are, and territories are totally free. And, and just from the perspective, again, of people watching who I think are already maybe a little bit overwhelmed with news of all the different vaccines, on, on the face of it, you see, for example, Moderna and Pfizer, go for it, use it, it's, you know, 95% effective. And then we see all these caveats attached to AstraZeneca and the percentage of effectiveness maybe appears to be a little bit lower. What, what is your message to Canadians who feel like there's a better vaccine and a, and a worse vaccine? Well, right now, my message is we have uh, outstanding vaccines, whether they are uh, RNA or uh, other types like the AstraZeneca, uh, Johnson & Johnson that was just approved in the U.S. as well. And uh, we have to be careful about what the data means and what the percentages mean and, and so on. The most important thing about a vaccine is that it prevents uh, serious complications, it prevents serious disease, and of course, hospitalization and ultimately death. And this is what all the vaccines that we have right now do. So in this in, in this sense, they all do exactly what we need them uh, to be doing. Mild illness is not a big deal, you know, if your nose is running, even if you have a little bit of fever, as long as we are preventing hospitalization, serious disease, and uh, um, death, I think then we should not be worried what, you know, whatsoever. And, and just to underline it for the audience, y y from your perspective, the, 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 what you've read, all, all the vaccines approved in Canada so far will do that, will accomplish that. 
Absolutely. There wasn't a single um, death due to coronavirus or hospitalization in uh, people who have been vaccinated with the AstraZeneca or with the other vaccines as well. And it, it, do you think ultimately, uh, I mean, should, should Canadians have any choice eventually? I mean, this is this is obviously looking far down the road because we're not there when it comes to supply. But for example, in the summer, if there is a choice, are, are do, do you think Canadians will have be able to make a decision about which vaccine to take? Or should it just be, you know, whichever one you're offered, you take? If, if it were me, you know, I'd just take which one is offered to me because they're all uh, safe and they're all effective. Uh, I think that uh, as we learn more about this pandemic and whether we are going to be needing to uh, uh, revaccinate, to provide booster shots mm -hmm. and so on, some vaccines, uh, the order of, of vaccines may become perhaps interesting to consider. But for now, there's absolutely no reason uh, not to take the vaccine that is offered to us. And just before I let you go, Professor Niemer, BC announced today that they're going to delay the second dose by up to four months of the two-dose Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. Uh, what is your take on, on that decision? And do you think other provinces might consider following suit or should consider? You, you know, the, 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 the studies so far and the vast majority of the data that we have uh, on the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine are from studies where they were given three to four weeks apart, not, you know, three to four months apart. So I think it's really important that we stick with the data and with the, you know, great science that gave us these fantastic vaccines and not tinker with it. Now, you know, if people and provinces and, and other researchers want to do clinical trials and test the effectiveness of uh, different uh, spacing, I think that's that's perfectly okay. That's called clinical trials. They're, they usually enroll people. They, they get consent from them. They explain to them uh, what are the advantages or disadvantages, and uh, they compare them to what is uh, being recommended. And perhaps we will find out that we can, uh, you know, space these uh, these different doses. But for now, we, we simply don't have enough data that tells us this is an effective strategy, particularly uh, when we think that we have uh, variants of the virus that are emerging, that are not as well uh, uh, um, recognized by the vaccine. So I think that partial immunity is something that people need to be very wary of, and it's probably best to just vaccinate as recommended and as studied for now. Do, do you think BC, would you characterize what BC announced today as risky? <laughs> I, I think that they may be carrying out a large clinical trial, and uh, when you do when you do this, there are standards that need to be uh, to be observed. You need to have, you know, ethical approval. You need to have a consent of the participants, and you need to be following uh, the the individuals who are being uh, given this novel or innovative way of uh, of administering a, a, a therapy, a vaccine or a drug. So I think that uh, it's possible to do it, but it, it amounts right now to a basically population level experiment. And I think it needs to be done as we expect clinical trials to be carried out. Okay, Professor Niemer, I'll leave it there. I appreciate your time, like I said, always. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.